and welcome to the New York stop on our virtual book tour, Snacky Tunes. I am one half of your host, Darren Bresnitz. And I'm the other half of your host, Greg Bresnitz. And we are so excited to be joined by Jeremiah and Fabian of Wild Air, Contra, and Peoples, and the incredible, one of their favorites, one of our favorite bands, Thrice. Welcome, everyone. And we want to thank our co-host, Archistratus, co-founder Paige is here with us as well. Uh, if everyone can go around and introduce themselves, that'd be great. I'm Fabian. I'm Fabian's friend, Jeremiah. <laughs> uh, I'm Ed Breckenridge. I play bass in Thrice. I'm his brother, Riley Breckenridge, and I play drums in Thrice. Hi, I'm Paige. I'm the owner of Archistratus. Excited to be here. Sweet. So thank you all for joining us. You know, we're here to talk about the connection between food and music. And one of the things that drew us to this uh, center of this specific Venn diagram is really the creative process. And what goes into creating a dish or writing a song, putting together a restaurant, making an album, and love for all of you to talk about how you have approached your own creative process and what you see the similarities between the food you love and the music you make and how they combine together. Who, who wants to? You should take it. No, you go. <laughs> I should take it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's a correlation or if like, you know, like I would never say that I've been inspired by a song or or like a, a band to create a dish, but I think definitely just the way, you know, the way I think the way we listen to food, the, the way we listen to music and the art we, you know, the art we like, designers, you know, clothing, everything, I think that just shapes us as people. And I think, you know, when you're listening to music from creative people, when you're surrounded by, by people who are pushing the envelope and whatever they're doing, then it just makes you feel like you want to do that with whatever you're doing. Um, and that's, you know, I, I started listening to these guys when I was, I don't know, 14, 15. Mm. And it was like every record they put out, you know, it was different. It wasn't, it was the same band, but it, like, you know, it wasn't like punk anymore. It wasn't hardcore anymore. It wasn't like experimental. Then like, it just kept changing and changing. And I just never felt that, you know, like I wasn't into it. I just, it, like for me, it just felt that I was growing up with whatever changes they were going through, um, which was very interesting to me. Yeah, I think like with, um, like nothing's really that literal for for me. They're just like, mostly with food, like uh, it's it's food related. So if I see like things in the market and they're next to each other, or if I'm tasting something that will inspire the food. Um, like a dish or something like a literal inspiration and then the creative process and then the way like this it's more about the style i think the and the way of of working and the way of coming up with the like when you actually see like <clears throat> the ingredients next to each other or you actually see some colors or something and you're like oh like that's what i want to do with with this dish you have to have the the the, the foundation you have to have the tools already so i think where like the inspiration of music comes in is like, when we work, we already have those tools. We already know how to cook. And then when we, you know, whether even before like we met, you know, these guys, like when we listen to the music, you kind of understand, at least to the best of your ability or what influences you, you understand like what the progression is or what the advancement is or what the creative process might be and how that influences you so when we hear like music that we love it usually you know whether it's like through an album or through different you know songs in the same album different albums you kind of experience something i think that um makes you want to get better at what you do or makes you want to you know just create feelings through and, and 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 touch like emotions through what you're making and i think that like instead of like oh I heard this song now it's gonna that's beats with <laughs> tomato you know it's just more like you know it I, and i like the, the fact that we you know we don't really make 
like four dishes and then just like live on that. Like we're always making new things, always trying to like create, create, create. And we go through definitely like chunks of time where we come up with stuff and we come and we go through phases. And I think that's when you start to see the similarities whether it's with art or, you know, like visual art or, or music or, um, you know, like whatever it is, like comedians even or, or, or actors like that we interact with, we kind of, that's really like the biggest inspiration is just like working through a catalog, working through um, the process, like, and then getting to talk about it and find out like what the actual process is, is like when you really make all the dots connect. Over to yeah, it's, the oh, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I would say with music stuff, it's like the exploratory aspect of it is, is inspiring and to see other people exploring also is, is super, uh, cool in many mediums, you know, it's, it's really great. Yeah. And to expand on that a little bit, just not getting stuck in a thing where you're like, oh, I just make fried chicken. And that's it. And I don't want to expand beyond that. Um, I do like all these other foods, but I'm afraid to incorporate those styles into what I do. Um, that kind of makes its presence felt in what we do. We're inspired by so many different types of music that it would be a shame if we like closed all of that off and didn't explore that when we get creative. Yep. Yeah. Can, I, can everybody hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can yeah. now, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Sorry about that. That was a hectic couple of minutes there. Um, so I, I kind of missed the uh, the intro question here in my mad rush to try and sign on. Oh, sure. It's just about talking about the creative process and about how it inspires your songwriting, creating albums, Got and it. how uh, you see it, um, you know, your own journey. Right. Um, and trying to draw a parallel between like cooking and, and, and food yep. and music. Yes. I would think, I think one of the things that I saw, or I guess experienced pretty much right off the bat with Jer and Fab's cooking was, I, I thought the balance of flavors was, was really well done. And I think with anything, in, you know, creative, but especially music as well, I think balance is a really important thing. Um, you know, just striking a balance between loud, quiet, you have a dynamics. And I think you can, there's a lot of parallels between that and, and food. Um, I'll start with the band first, but I think one of the best things about creativity is constraint and how you react to constraints. So I'd be curious, um, starting with Thrice and then going over to Jeremiah and Fabian, what constraints did you have early on in the creative process that helped define, define your sound and for you guys helped define the food that you made? That's a difficult one. <laughs> one of the easiest things to point to maybe would be budget. Um, yeah. Having a, a bigger budget allows you time to experiment more. Um, better tools to experiment with um and then beyond that i think just being young when you're young so much of your identity is wrapped up in the music that you listen to and you know for some people more than others but um, i think maybe early on we might have been a little bit scared to expand outside of that punk and hardcore and metal influence even though we were listening to jazz and indie rock and experimental stuff um electronica um, and then as you get older you kind of realize i don't have to be like who my music is necessarily like um and there's no shame in incorporating those wild influences and just because you're not punk or hardcore or metal enough for this scene doesn't mean what you're making has no validity or, or value. Um, so getting to a point where we were mature enough to kind of trust our guts and let our influences push us in different directions and take chances that we might not have if we were like, no, we're just punk. We're just, just hardcore kids. Um, that really freed us up to do a lot of stuff. And I think 
shapes the the career that we've built for ourselves. Maybe and Jeremiah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about I don't know constraints, but I think just touching on something um, uh, that you just said, it was that you know I was thinking the other day that whenever you do something, either it's like playing an instrument, cooking, or you know when you're designing something, you go through this phase that you're trying to emulate something you like, people that you like, and you're trying to do that, and then you get to that point where you find something that you necessarily don't like. But, you know, it could kind of like you start feeling that it's yours mm -hmm. and then you, you just have to pursue that, even if, it, if you don't think that it's cool or even if it's not what you want to do, like you just feel it. There's something inside of you that just tells you, like, this is kind of my thing. Like, I just I need to chip at it. And I think the more you start working and the more tools you have, that's what I think that's a constraint that I put in myself sometimes is that I I find these things that I wouldn't normally do or that I don't want to do, but I think it's, you know, it's some, there's something there and I dig deeper into it. I, I like, I start chipping at it. And then I think that's how you actually find uh, ways that you, I mean, ways to find who you are and, and what you're doing. I think, I mean, I, I definitely live more in a world that is bound by constraints that I don't necessarily always fight against because, you know, with food, it's such a, because we live in a world where we have to, you know, there's a business to it. There's also other people involved. So, you know, whereas the, for the boys, they, the music, they get to play all the music that they create, but some of the elements of food, we have to let other people execute certain parts mm. of it. So sometimes we are the ones doing everything and that, you know, depends on the, the event, the restaurant, but inevitably with multiple like places and outlets there's cooks there's people there's two chefs there's people so there can there's a constraint to someone else's abilities um you know and and also like maybe they're from it doesn't have to be like ability but just like what they're familiar with and there's this like for me there's always this constraint of like of like the you know money and the ingredients and the time and everything so we don't always have you know he knows like sometimes i like to use something that's only around for a week and it's some part of a, you know, part of the Brussels sprouts that after it's the, the leaves and the top. And then as soon as it gets a bit too cold, then, you know, you don't have those first sprouts, you know, those, those, those first Brussels leaves. So I love to use it, but, you know, if we're thinking about something that's going to last, you know, and, and, and it's going to be able to be replicated and I'm going to be able to execute it for more than just like a couple of days, then we can't live in that constraint. So I, I use those constraints to come up with things that are just as good maybe, um, and then save those unconstrained um, elements for moments where we can like be untethered. Like if we do like a private dinner, if we're doing something for, you know, a very special occasion where we only need to cook for 10 people, then I can get something really rare, really strange or, you know, particular. And then everything else is kind of the constraint is, What's, is it readily available? Is it able to be consistently good? And um, and do we feel good about it? Like use doing something for a couple of weeks and I don't know, maybe it's similar with, with the band when they, you know, like if you wanted to bring some crazy piece of instrument on the road and it's just too large or too difficult to set up every time <laughs> in different venues, or something, you know, like <clears throat> I remember I saw like LCD play um, and it wasn't, they did 12 nights in Brooklyn. It wasn't until like their fourth night that they could get this one synth hooked up right because it was just like four nights of it, not like every night it was something went wrong during the show. And James was like, yeah, this is the fourth night it's happened, but we're going to keep trying. So it was like, obviously it doesn't make, it doesn't always make sense, you know? You know, we actually, uh, I was going to say, we went, we went through a phase where like we, we did a concept record um and the stage show for that it was like three eps different elements um all sorts of different sound like electronic everything and then uh it was difficult there was like a lot of stuff to bring out on stage a lot of technical problems and the immediate response after that though was to make a super stripped down band in a room kind of record which was also mm. super fun and kind of like pulling you at all these different directions um 
it's, I mean, that kind of stuff makes, I mean, the reaction to th what's happening makes, you know, creating live music or I'm sure making food like so much fun. It's like, you, it's, it's problem solving, you know? Art is not created in a vacuum by any means. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are, I uh, just wanted to call out that we're gonna be taking some questions from the audience at the end. So if anyone has a question, please email them to events at faden.com and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, one of the things that we found in talking to a lot of chefs in the book and the musicians that we know is that for a lot of us, music was the first way we connected with people. And now it's food because a lot of us have grown older and, and food is the way that we talk to people. Um, and the great thing that I love about all of your relationship is that, you know, Jeremiah and Fabian, you grew up loving and listening to Thrice and then you were able to connect with them later in life and you guys as a band was unable to connect with them as as the food they made and it's just like very coming together of two worlds both with a mutual respect to what you created and connecting in that way so i'd love to hear a little bit about how you guys met and what you love about each other's artistic creations yeah we met um through you know we've obviously we we've been been fans for a while but um i think that they came through Portland, Portland. Portland. Yeah. I mean, they didn't come, they were in Portland. Uh, we we don't, we're not in Portland, we're in New York. Yeah. <clears throat> they, were, they went through Portland and um, we were there for an event. And like, we're the kind of people like, you know, when we go and we're cooking somewhere else, like the last thing we kind of wanted to do was work. We wanted to like, you know, go somewhere, but the work usually is like the vehicle to let us travel. So we went there and then um, Danny, Danny Bowen was, was, doing um the same like event as us uh and he had um said like hey like i know you guys love thrice like i think i can like you know we should go i think i can get us tickets because he's um good friends with jeff rickley and he plays in in this band with with jeff from thursday so we were like we were like let's just leave this event that we were doing and like grab some pizzas and just show up and uh and so we headed down and we picked up like pizzas from like this really good place in portland you know it's, it's like like what it, it's part of the what we do you know it's like even though it's not our food it's like we're in hospitality we're in Love so that. we you know we wanted to to like bring some some thing to warm the the stomach and soul so we we came with some some pizza offerings and then uh you know we hung out a little bit and 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 just kind of like vibed off of like um the interest and then i don't know i think after that we just started like like following different shows like because we were traveling a lot that year and we like ended up being in um a couple different cities at the same time and then in new york um you know i told i told all the guys to come through and eat and um you know they thought we were open but we were like we were shot like sunday mondays and i think it was like a monday or something and i was like yeah we'll just cook for them i was like i told him i was like do you, you want to just go in and just like cook on our day off and and so we had them in and, and hung out and stuff like that and I think you know we just connected off of having a, a very like I think there's it's like already once we had cooked for them I, I I think they liked it I hope they liked it but you know there's like a mutual respect thing and um kind of like friends in common and, and I think that just kind of like naturally just built off that Yeah, I would say that that meal that we had that 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 day that you guys had the the day off or whatever and you came in was like an experience for everyone that they will forever remember. It was like the most intense. I don't know. And you guys even like made stuff for me. I mean, I, I don't eat meat or dairy. So like you guys just made stuff like like uh, I don't I don't know like it was so good. Um, definitely a game changer for for the the bar of food. What are you eating fish now? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, it, like really randomly. Like I don't. I'm not super strict about anything, but. I made like, like we, we, a family member sent us like scallops 
like me and my my lady the other day <laughs> yeah and i made them and they were pretty good <laughs> but uh <laughs> that was like Gallop, that, too new <laughs> yeah that was the first time i had any like shellfish or whatever in in many years so it was a little bit scary but it was i don't i mean it was great still alive it's good. yeah i think <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that meal that we had was mind-blowing. And then every time we've been back uh, since then, they just continue to blow my mind. Um, it's just, it's food on a level that I didn't really understand existed or could exist. Um, and then I think at the root of that, how genuine they are as people um, is super appealing and how easy they are to connect with and you know, we pick their brains about how they do what they do and what goes into making what they make and they do the same to us and it's just a really cool conversation to have um, and for better or worse like my uh, only ex experience with like more elevated dining I guess was like watching stuff on Food Network or whatever and like a lot of the stuff that's <laughs> popular there it's a lot of pomp and circumstance and like, yes, whether it's like the way the chef looks or the way they act, that's like the popular, ends up being the popular guy. And, and that ends up happening in music a lot too. And that these guys are just super down to earth, uh, amazingly talented people was just such a cool uh, confluence of like, personality and talent um uh, just in awe of what they do i mean yeah, i think I mean, it was I... the same so i was just gonna say that when when we went to portland actually tepe you know i've been listening to you guys forever and you know i've traveled to see you guys when i was 18 you know stuff like that like i've never traveled to see anyone but you know we, we saw the guys and like we were like oh you know like what are we gonna talk about and then tepe started asking us about bread <laughs> and we were like oh okay so like there's something coming you know we're like and then afterwards we left and we're like no we're just talking about bread with those guys cool and he's an amazing baker yeah i mean i think no no i'm not no i'm not very amateur but um yeah i mean i think beyond the mutual respect you know just like what i was saying i think just i think we we hit it off just as as people right away and i think it's just the common um I don't know, just a just similar type of person. And I think we um, just had a lot of common in, in just, you know, the passion that they put into their food and, um, yeah, just the creative process. I think we had a lot to talk about. So We're all very yeah. gentle people. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's> <laughs> well, we have, you know, we have this, this um, you know, we have the restaurants as like, um, you know, one of the main reasons that we we met, um, you know, years ago, over 10 years ago, and, and we kind of were living in Europe for a while, talking about like, um, what we wanted to do. And we ended up coming back to New York, because, you know, at the time, like, I think we could have found something like, interesting to do in Copenhagen or France. But, you know, we wanted to have a place that everyone could come to, like from around the world. And that, to me, is New York, and was home to just have you know, like if you like if you're traveling up for business, if you're on tour, if you're like visiting a friend, it's like New York. And so that we use it as like a place to to be hosting people. And, you know, it's a it's a place where it well, used to be a place where, for people to gather, you know, and, and I think that was something that like a lot of we've met so many people through through just being like, come to the restaurant, you know, sending like a message to somebody that you feel like you have a similar, you know, shared interest and you have like a similar personality. It's like, just send them a message and be like, Hey, I know you're going to guys, you know, so-and-so is going to be playing in town, so drop by the restaurant, come hang out and see like, you know, maybe we'll, we'll find some, some, it's something interesting to, to kick off. All right. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, for something completely different than what we're talking about. But I noticed that in uh, Jeremiah and Fabian, in your playlist that you have uh, multiple songs from the same band. 
And it made me think about like kind of getting into getting into the music and really getting into a certain mood. And that sometimes when I come into the kitchen, I like will play one song over and over again for two hours and just kind of get into this state. And I was thinking that there's like a calibration to that. And then also if, if you do that too, when you're cooking and like also if thrice, if you guys use uh, repetition and drone in your music and if that also kind of calibrates you when you're going to write music. I mean, for for me, I I think it was my playlist that we ended up using. But yeah, I mean, it definitely goes from like the you know most calm to the heaviest. But also, like in that playlist, it's all bands that I really like, and it's sort of like different songs from different albums, and it's just kind of showing the progression of. And I think with these guys, it's it's a perfect example. You know, I like when I started listening to them, they played like punk, and then it started getting heavier. And heavier and heavier and I was getting into heavier and heavier music and then like I start, I stopped listening to heavy music and I started listening more like experimental and that's when these guys came out with the uh, with B Bisu and the like the element records and that was like super out, like all over the place you know out there and like I was really into that and then like it just kind of like progresses through that so that's a playlist and uh, yeah I mean you know sometimes I'm in a really bad mood and I just listen to like every time I die and I just want to listen to like heavy music and sometimes I'm like very chill and I just want to listen to like, yeah. Manu. 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 Yeah, I think like for me, I, I like playing like, you know, a whole, I play like albums and I almost feel like when I'm at home or when I'm like cooking and it's like me that play an album because I'm like, I'm making the same dish, you know, I'm like, it's not like I'm making like a beef bourguignon and it takes like 20 minutes like there's the whole process of making it and I don't really think about it like I just I rarely ever put on a playlist and make a playlist for myself to listen to sometimes it's like other people will send me a playlist but I just tend to just put on a whole album and if I'm like you know until I find the, the album that I that I want to listen to for like a whole period of time and I don't know if it's dr like droning or repetitive but it's more like um you know I and maybe it's sub subconsciously like somebody else set out to do something start to finish and I'm kind of doing the same thing. Bryce, any uh, comments, questions? <laughs> I mean, I would Hello. say, oh, sorry, you go, right? No, no, you go. <laughs> Me? Uh, okay. Um, I, I mean, I think we definitely make use of, of drone, um, I I would say all of us, I don't know, how would I say this? I guess I write a lot of loop-based stuff. I think everybody does. Um, and a lot of the times when, when I'm making stuff that way, um, you will end up creating um, things that you through the loop you will end up creating things that layer on that and then that becomes the main and then you can sometimes drop the loop out and it doesn't even exist anymore or or the the there is like a drone that's a constant that's that's really important to tying unlike pieces together um yeah sometimes i wish that we could just make like a super droney droney album <laughs> just because it would be it would be um kind of like a cool juxtaposition to like how melodic a lot of our stuff ends up moving. But like, that's the cool thing about our band. We really like don't have too much of an identity that holds us in a place where we could, we could make anything at any time. Um, so coming back to it though, like definitely, um, definitely drone is something that I think we love and, and use and, when you said the word, I was like, ooh, I love, you know, because <laughs> I got all excited. Um, I know that we just wrote a book and Paige uh, owns a bookshop, but one of the incredible things about music and food is that it really connects with people on a different level that sometimes words can't convey. No offense to lyrics, but I believe that it touches humans in a, in a different capacity beyond just um, articulation so i'm curious both you know in the food that you cook and the songs and you write like 
how are you trying to connect with your fans and what type of emotions um, are you trying to evoke through your creative practice? I'll start with Dwayce. Samson, you wanna take that one? I'm trying to process that. Um, I mean, I don't know if we're ever super intentional about what kind of chord we're trying to strike with their music. Um, yeah, I don't know. Feel free to jump in here, guys. Um, I think I think I think um, a lot of the times we write what makes us inspired or what what feels good to us, and we hope that other people will feel the same. Um, but it also trips me out how much, like even us within the band, we we will really um, enjoy a certain thing, but somebody might be hearing it totally different, like from the way you hear it. So like, it's really hard to calculate how people will understand a thing. I don't know if there's the same effect in, in food. You know, everybody tastes things different, I'm sure. But like... Uh, Really, I think what we're going for is to relate a feeling that 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 is just kind of oozing out of us, and we want other people to feel the same way or be inspired in the same way that we are maybe inspired by a different uh, musician. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of like what what Fab was saying earlier, like. It's that, it's that certain something that it's hard to really place your finger on, but like once you, you feel it or you hear it, it's kind of that feeling of like, oh, okay, that's it. You know, that's, that's the feeling that we're trying to push. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can actually articulate that though. I think getting, getting there requires a lot of like pushing and pulling and lifting and falling. It's just like the juxtaposition of different moods and different dynamics. Uh, but I think uh, maybe the way you would with courses in a meal, you're trying to make each part of the song have its own impact and its own gravity, for lack of a better term, um, and then make what comes next something that elevates. Yeah, I think with... Um... You know, like with food, the, the one of the main differences maybe is uh, like we we do we kind of well, it's not a difference from food and music, but it's a difference between like um, I think a lot of musicians do this, so they're just the pop musicians that are like that put out commercial music that isn't necessarily like well like like well thought out. It's just like appealing to people. So, but we have to do a certain level of that like because of you know we're not a 10 seed restaurant in the middle of sweden so like because <laughs> we have to reach a certain amount of people there is like sometimes we'll talk about something and like you know it's just it's just being a in the business mind that some we're like okay we're gonna have this this and there's gonna be this course which is like kind of a, a little bit easier to digest it's like more familiar but then at the same time like because you know, sometimes we want to do something that's really out there with the food that's more for us. But I forget that, like, because we eat, you know, we're exposed to so much from the other chefs that we eat, the other places, you know, the restaurants we visit, the dialogue, the food, like all the different the experience, even just like being in the, 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 the industry for so long you start to do things that you're like, oh, this is a crowd pleaser. This is like, but it's good. And then somebody else will will show you how like they were surprised by that. So like I made this dish last week and this a, a, a guy I known from like high school came and ate and he was like, I really don't like it just I was like, how was the meal? I was like, you just blew my mind. Like, how did you think of pork and kale? And I was just like, it's like pork and kale. That's like it seems like everyone would love that, you know, but he wasn't he wasn't complaining. He was just like he loved it. He was just saying it just was it felt so different to him and i was afraid oh maybe this this dish is a little bit too simple maybe it's just hitting like a little bit too much of this this baseline but then i think that um you know because we're always thinking of like sometimes the ideas are just so like avant-garde that we always are used to like bringing it down yeah. that some people are not 
used to any of that stuff. They're just used to like what you see in the store or what you see at like, you know, a chain restaurant. And that's what is the most easily understood thing. I think like, um, you know, there's always the base. Like, like I always, when I listen to a, a Thrive song, I always know it's Thrive, even if it's from the artist to like any other record, like it's always Thrive, right? But like, it changes all the time. And I think with us, it's the same. Like, there's certain things that are Contra or Wild Air, but you can see like, you know, there's, we go through phases where like, you know, we're really into acidic flavors or like really into like the balance between sweet and sour, like all these things. And you know, what we try to do between these phases is try to do the, the best we can, make the food as tasty as we can. And then I think you just, you weed out people through these phases. You know, I think for yeah. you guys, I think it's the same. Now, 15 years later, you still have fans from the first records, the Go Yuri shows. And those are like real fans, right? Like we have a couple of regulars that have been coming to the restaurant for seven years. And they're, you know, they're, they're always aware of like little subtleties that you do. Like they'll be like, oh, you know, I get it. Like I see like a constant, like there's changes. And I think that's what we try to do. You know, I, I think we always in mind, like we always try to do food that's tasty, that tastes good. But like, I think we do little things here and there that please us like the creative ways, you know, like I'll make vanilla ice cream, but I'll be like, oh, you know, would it be nice to make like a super salty vanilla ice cream? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. And it's actually, you know, I think it's good. <laughs> Maybe someone will think it's salty, but I like, it's just stuff like that, I think. Yeah, I think it's just so because we're exposed so much that you just keep doing the same thing or you're told to do the same thing over and over again. So you're like, when you work in a restaurant, you're just always like, and that's why you see so many repetitive dishes because you you think in your mind because your chef told you or whatever, or the diners say that how much they love that combination of beet and goat cheese. You're like, hey, it's beet season. What should we put it with? Goat cheese. But like, it's just not where our, <laughs> mind, our mind doesn't go there. You know, our mind just goes like beets, like what can we put it with? And it's almost like we've never worked with it. Salty vanilla. Yeah. And we did beets with, you know, uh, yogurt and, and hazelnut and as a dessert, you know, like, and it's just not, it's not about like how weird can we make it? I think it's just about like, like how do we do something that is at the end of the day is going to be good, but we, there's something to try and like not make it weird for the sake of making it weird. Yeah, I mean, I think that's similar with music too, you know. Um, I mean, I, I suppose like making a menu is somewhat like trying to create an album too, where you're like, you have the songs or the, the dishes or whatever, where you're like, okay, this is kind of like, you know, not the crowd pleaser, but you know, this one might be a little bit easier to, to digest. So then we can put in this really experimental thing here. And yeah. Yeah. And you might have somebody that ends up, you're going to have people that like both or people yeah. that like only the more experimental things. Or more right. Like, and I think it's, that's all good. Like for, for, for both of us. Cause I guess it, yeah. as long as we feel satisfied, right. With like putting it out that I don't think any of us worry about like having to compromise that much. It's just more about like, you don't want to get into your own head of just like making it so, cause I don't like, uh, for us, it doesn't really, it, it also pleases us to see people eat it and like smile, you know? Yeah, you never want to be like, it's seeing someone eat something. <laughs> I mean, like, what the? And I imagine it's a thing. Yeah. Like, you just like, There's... you know, and just play this song that people are just like, yeah, I, I feel like you guys never go, let's just do this really messed up riff and this song to just screw with people. Well, like, there, there are, there are songs where we're like all like pretty excited <laughs> to play it and then you play it and people are just kind of like, <laughs> and then it's it's like people it's like people leaving like you make the dish that you're super excited about and people leave like most of it on the plate when they yeah, when it's done. Or some, that, something like that you know uh, how, do you, how do you like how do you deal with that because we when that happens to us like i usually am like fabian's usually the one who's like you know well that's interesting but people like aren't eating it and i'm like <laughs> I, I and and for me i'm almost like all i have to do is just change the smallest thing and I'm not like willing to like get rid of it. Are you guys the same? I don't. I think we kind of just look at each other and go, "Huh, I guess they didn't like that." Yeah, <laughs> we liked it. But but it's it's interesting also because you know it may be different than having a restaurant menu. But we play the songs over a period of time. Like when we made the record Visu, 
it was a pretty drastic change and people didn't like it like we played the songs and people were like Bleh. and now people are bummed if we don't play it a bunch so it's like yeah i think that, that you just got to well, do it with you. Waiting out the people right like like maybe back then like there was a a crowd of you know because like what Bezo was after artists and like artists was like a huge album right so like that's the same thing happens to us you know of like awards come by or like recognition comes by and then a bunch of people who really don't like us or like like what we do come to see the restaurant and like you just inevitably I think creative in a creative way you have to weed people out because yeah. then you have people who like that record you know which I think is amazing also I think like with with the, um, the music and the food is like we have to let people like maybe conscious like their first restaurant that they experience that's like different, you know, and they have to, and then they go eat a bunch of places and they're like, oh, I get like why, mm -hmm. you know, there's more context. And I'm sure it's the same thing with music. Maybe like right before Thrice, they're this, you know, they're mostly, they were into pink and like Katy Perry or something. And like, they just had to like listen to real music for the first time, you know? It's like that jump, I think, you know, you, you don't have the context and it, it can be a little bit like, and, and maybe that's a time thing, right? Like you said, like after several years, they had a lot of time to like re-listen re -listen to it. Like, I'm sure, like I always go back and listen to like older albums that I liked when I was younger and especially a lot of albums that I didn't like when I was really young. And I wonder what was it and am I gonna like it now? And yeah. I think yeah. it comes down to trust of the artists as well, right? To know that you're going to go back in and give it a time. Happens with authors, things like that, where it's like, okay, this is something new from them. And I love and I respect the food they're making, the songs they're writing, the words they're writing, but I'm not getting it the first couple times. So I got, but I know that I love what they're making and what they made in the past. Um, so, and I want to make sure we have enough time for one more question before we go to the fan stuff page. I know you had one question for us. What's so funny is like everything that you guys just said was totally what around what I was thinking about, especially Fabian, when you were talking about how you go through phases of different flavors and tastes together. And I was thinking about taste and how taste is so important in music and how taste is so important in food and how it relates to the body and creativity, but also just like, I, I want to know like, what were the things that all of you bonded over that we did all the other friends out what connected you guys at the beginning over taste? So it's like, what brought you together? What were those elemental things that brought you together as a band? And what were those elemental things that brought you together as like, as chefs that you were like, this, I feel connected. You're my brother. Like, here we go. This is our, this is our taste. This is, this, <laughs> this is what separates us and connects us. Um, that's what I was thinking about when you guys were just talking and even a little before that. So it's funny. I went there. Yeah, I mean, I think with um, uh, with us, it was it was pretty. We I met, and he was really young when I met him, and like um, you know, I think still young. He we we just oh, yeah. had like you know, I was like, oh, like okay, I don't really like. I'm surprised he was at that age. He was just so kind of like sure about like what he liked and what he didn't like. Like oh, like very opinionated and very like you know, um, I think a lot of times when you're starting out and like, you're, you think you're supposed to like everything, you know, and, uh, and we started talking about food and traveling and we really showed it, like he had an interest that was clearly, you know, the darker side of food, I would say, like the more interesting, like no, like less frilly smoke and mirrors. And um, at the same time, I think, like even though we had different interests, I ended up living in Paris, and he was in in Copenhagen in Sweden, um, and I think that speaks a little bit about our personalities. Like I, I kind of was like enjoying this very like old world, very um, you know working in like a bistro, and uh, he was in this much more like Nordic dark, like <laughs> you know kind of black like, metal -y. yeah kind of energy. <laughs> and um but i think we you know we and we still have very different opinions about certain things but like you know when we, we go to a restaurant or something and we we immediately know if we like the place or not or if we like yeah. the food, we see something but it it kind of 
we'll end up liking like different elements and maybe different dishes. But I think we just um, are able to, I mean, we spent a lot of time together, um, but before we did, I think, um, I think it's the things that we don't like yeah. that brought us I didn't want to say that. Like, yeah. I was trying to figure out how to say that without being like, <laughs> you know, like, it's not like, I, I, I want to use a more positive word yeah. than we're both like, we're haters of, no, it's just like, <laughs> I think you just, we were really quick to like dismiss a lot of the, the, the things of show and things that didn't really matter. So a lot of times when we see a lot of um, like um, food or theatrical things, it doesn't attract us because we know there's not a lot of substance underneath it. And that's kind of what draws us. And then in turn probably uh, attracts us to things that are a little bit more meaningful. Yeah, and I think there's like, uh, you know, the, we started eating out together a lot. And I think it was just kind of like, uh, there's a lot of acceptance in our relationship as I'm sure there has to be in, in a band where I necessarily don't like everything that he likes. And, but but I can see the perspective, you know, and like. I remember like just eating out with him like we'll have the same dish and I'll be like I'll be like you like this and I'll be like I'm, like this is not for me but I'll know that he likes it and I, I appreciate why he likes it and I can see it like I can see the the value that it has but I can like I think we just appreciate that there's a balance between like negative and, and positive space you know there's like a lot of back and forth with that but we know it's something that's like good you know we'll go eat something and he will, we'll both acknowledge this is good, but one of us will like it, one of us won't. But I don't think we really differ on like the quality execution of something. We will never like taste a piece of chicken and he'll be like, I thought it was undercooked and I thought it was perfect. It's more like, I don't really appreciate the way that it ended up coming together. And, and I think you will, it's, you know. So I wanna make sure that we have enough time for, we have enough time for one question uh, from the audience and thank you everyone for participating. And this actually deals with the current situation that we're going through with the global pandemic. And two of the hardest hit industries and creative industries have been restaurants and live music. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on how living through the pandemic and seeing it lasting until at least next year has effective, affected the food you're making, your idea of service, and then also the music you're writing and the idea of a live experience and connecting with the people who love what you do. Thrice, we'll start with you. Hmm. Riley. Um, I think we're still exploring ways to reconnect with people. We had this year slated as like a basically a year off um, to write a new record. So we didn't miss out on a ton of touring. We got a, a full US tour. We had to sneak that in right before everything went to SHIT. And um, I think now we are trying to make progress on that record and kind of evaluate how and when we're going to be able to share that with people. Um, as far as live shows are concerned, I know uh, live streaming online stuff is an option, but um, getting everybody in the same room uh, the way we used to for like a 2000 capacity room and everybody screaming along seems so far away right now that it's kind of hard to yeah. hard to even plan, plan for that, even though we kind of are um, because everything just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. So we just have to be resilient and smart uh, with how we utilize this time. And um yeah, as far as it informing the music, I'm sure the stuff that we're writing is going to be a bit darker than it would have been otherwise. <laughs> so really, I mean, I think also too. I mean, somewhat on on the flip side, we've found ourselves all of a sudden with a lot more time to be writing this record, um, which is somewhat of a positive takeaway from it. But yeah, it's it's been a really interesting time for sure. I think for, for us, like, um, yeah, we've just been trying to figure out ways, like, you know, packaged goods, like, are we making, like, food that's in the form of, like, sauces and condiments that represent us that we wouldn't normally do, maybe because of time, maybe because of, like, it's not, like, we, we, we don't really do those things, but 
we definitely we did everything from takeaway which we've never done delivery making you know consumer packaged goods merch um and i think just trying to figure out how to get like one thing that i guess with um with us is like because there's like the food and then there's also like the other there's like the ideas and stuff and how do we get our brand to people in Orange County or Copenhagen or Sydney and, you know, use that as, you know, have different, we're still figuring that out, but different platform because if we just have only like the restaurants, even before COVID, it's like, it's very limiting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's, that we've seen that with like the book and stuff that there's an interest in kind of like, even if you can't come and eat, like maybe you can just see something visually and kind of understand where we're at or listen to like, you know, a podcast talking about working with farmers or your, or people in the food industry. So I think both for like, I imagine for the band and like, and in, in food, we're just going to keep trying to bridge the gap and, and figure out ways to kind of like meet that audience um, with some, something that represents us. And that, that's not like, you know, hokey. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it, it's, it's given us time to, to breathe for a second and then just to sort of reassess everything. And, and for us, it's been a, a time of, for a lot of uh, openness and creativity and then just how, you know, we see our business and, you know, we've literally changed like Wilder, we changed it maybe five, like three, four times the concept in this year. You know, like in seven months we opened, you know, we were like a bakery, we were an all day cafe, we were delivery, we were, we were back to a normal restaurant outside and we we're going to sit inside soon. We're like going to do, so it's just been a lot of coping and a lot of, uh, you know, but on the, on the other hand, there's also been a lot of time to, to do things that we haven't done in a long time. You know, like we started baking, you know, like more time on the computer, like figuring stuff out on the internet and stuff, you know, making websites and, and stuff that we never thought that the internet, the YouTube, the YouTube, <laughs> the, YouTube the Facebook, the Instagram. Yeah. Uh, um, we have time for one more fan question and this is for everyone page, uh, Darren included. Um, what is the album and food pairing that is getting you through the pandemic? Oh, oh. Didn't say the fan uh, questions were going to be easy. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off since everyone's got that thinking face on. Um, I have been extremely stereotypical and started making sourdough essentially the week we went into pandemic, but I still have kept my starter alive and I'm still keeping up with it. So I'm doing that. And then I would say uh, the pup live album, which they put out for one day, plus the new um, pup EP uh has really just been really ripping it you know when i need a little bit of, of uh energy i'll just throw it on one of those and that's been getting me through the pandemic for me someone sent me a playlist called uh, pacific breeze and it's like a japanese jazz sort of situation Ooh. Ooh. listen to it Ooh. can you see it no you can't see it out of a pacific breeze on spotify um interesting and then food i don't know i've just been cooking at home a lot for the first time so <laughs> my girlfriend loves pasta so we've been cooking a lot of pasta which i it's not necessarily my favorite but it is what it is yeah. <clears throat> um i've been making like um beef noodle soup taiwanese style beef noodle soup very often um it's not really something that I like growing up. I didn't eat a lot of meat when I was younger, a lot of beef especially. So, but it's uh, it's something that kind of like is in the back of my mind. So I just know what it should taste like. And then I started making it and sending it to like different friends. You know, somebody had a baby, sent them like, you know, Ubered them some soup. And, um, but it's really homey. And I feel like I've made it more than any other dish during this whole time and um scallion pancakes and sc scallion yeah well it goes ah scallion i tried i tried yours by the way i oh, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll send you like the real yeah i gotta <laughs> <laughs> uh 
And I've been listening a lot of like, I don't know, I, when I make, it's weird, when I make like really rustic like Taiwanese food, I put on country. Mm. Um, I don't know. I put on Chinese, I mix Chinese food and I immediately start listening to country. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I, was, I don't know. I've been listening like old Brian Adams. Um Ooh, great. Yeah. And I listen to like um like uh a lot of a lot of sometimes when I'm just like needing to multitask, I listen to a lot of like um like Bad Bunny and like reggaeton. Bad Bunny's good. Yeah, like high energy Puerto Rican music gets me gets me like multitasking. Page then thrice. Um <laughs> I drink, I'll just do whatever. I, I can't think of uh, something, but last night, I, I after a long day of working, I got uh, a bunch of cheese and some bread, and I put on this album by Black Midi, which is like a cool- Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was a Love. very good pairing. <laughs> so I'll just say that, and uh, that's a great very, album. And Very British, very proper. That yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> But yeah, easy thing. Thrice to you guys as we wrap this up. Uh, I've, I've been listening a lot to uh, the album Fear Itself by Casual. It's like a hip hop record from early 90s. Um, that's just constant rotation. There's a lot of rad like bass lines and the, just the, 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 the samples that they had that they could use and used back then were just the best. Um, and uh, Trader Joe's soy vanilla ice cream with peanut butter and salt. That's, I've been having that like almost uh, too much. So simple comfort. Yum. I guess I'll go. Oh, oh, oh. go ahead. Tabs. Um, Nothing super consistent for me, but I suppose I've been listening to a lot of Coltrane lately. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I've just been on John Coltrane kick. Um, as far as food, gosh, I don't know. I guess we've been doing pretty consistent pizza nights at our house. I just mm. got one of those like baking steels to put in the oven. And so I've been trying my hand at like a naturally leavened neapolitan-ish style pizza mm. amazing uh, for me musically there's a band the singers from melbourne and then the other two guys are from germany uh, it's called heads some really dark uh noise rock um, that's been in heavy rotation and then food wise i have two young kids so we eat a lot of pasta but outside mm -hmm. of the pasta um I've been doing pork ribs on the smoker um, like once a month or something, I'm trying to get better at that, but I still suck. And then uh, I'm trying to do the pizza thing too. Again, that is kid related. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a daughter at the end of January, so I have a newborn. So I have been working on making mini omelets for her uh, and making omelets all the time. And since she is still relatively new, we've been listening to a lot of Philip Glass specifically ah, the Mishima nice. records, both the piano and the string version, depending on which mood we are in. Um, so yeah. So I want to thank everyone. Uh, I want to thank Contra Wild Air, Thrice, Archistratus. A special thank you to the Faden team for putting this together. A special shout out to May for coordinating all of this on the Archistratus side as well. Uh, to Ken as well for helping coordinate for this uh, and for just all of you making time in afternoon. The book is Snacky Tunes, music is the main ingredient. Please, please, please go buy a copy from Archistratus. Um, proceeds from it go to the Independent Restaurant Council, um, a great, great charity um, that's really helping to keep local restaurants alive. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Our next event is gonna be on November 7th with LE15 and Manu uh, and Lisa Digra. So please tune in. It's gonna be 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on November 7th. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you next time here on Snacky Tunes. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys.